and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on. For another donation deck, we have Simic Ramp. So this is similar to a couple of decks that I've played here. If you remember last, I think it was last Tuesday or the Tuesday before, one of those, I had a tier one Tuesday where I played Bant Ramp, where it was basically this same, uh, you know, very close to this uh, main deck. Uh, but then in the sideboard, we had our, our white spells in the sideboard, like Deputy of Detention and Devout Decree and Baffling End and stuff like that. Uh, this one's a... Uh, so instead, instead of having uh, those white spells in the sideboard, we have some some sideboard cards that aren't great. So your Ulan Drake um, and mass. Well, I mean mass manipulation is good, but for against aggro, you know, we have like Sir Ulan Drake and Ether Gust. Basically, we don't we don't really have stuff against vampires. You know, and that's that's what I'm kind of worried about with just the Simic cards. We're not re we're not really playing anything against vampires. I'd like to see like maybe some entrancing melodies or something like that, because. I just don't... I'm not really convinced Sir Eulen Drake is something you need to be playing at all. But it's a four of in our sideboard, so let's, you know, let's give it a, a try here. Uh, besides that, I was playing Paradise Druid. This has Growth Spiral, so we'll see how Growth Spiral does instead of Paradise Druid. That'll be interesting to try. Um, and then I had the fourth Cavalier and only two Tamiyo, but this has three and three and three, so we'll kind of see there. That Those are kind of the, the differences. Um... But yeah, so the reason to be playing a uh, good call, the reason to be playing Nexus in the uh, in the ramp decks here is because this is very good against Scape Shift. You just you know take all the turns like they don't interact with you. Like so, you just try to race to get to like where you're you are having Tamio find your Nexus and everything like that. Cavalier does a really good job of helping uh, reduce the count in your library as well. But it uh, last time it felt really strong, felt really strong over there. Um, so we'll go ahead and and give this one a try too, and see if these blue green cards can can uh, pull their weight. Should I should I go to ranked with this deck? I think I should. This deck's. I mean, this is just like the the Bant ramp that I've played. And ranked. We're gonna this usually donation decks I do the traditional constructed queue. But this is a pretty pretty mean Nexus, you know, pretty mean looking Nexus deck. We'll just go ahead and take this over to rank. Yeah. This deck's really good. You played around eight games today, all standard. You won every game I went first, lost every game I went second. <laughs> were you were you doing best best of best of one or or best of three so like was that cyborg games and everything too best of one okay yeah best best of one is is just like that's that's just how best of one is like that's how it'll be like next meta the meta after that meta game after that because best of one just really incentivizes um you know playing the most aggressive deck you can and curving out um and that aggressiveness could be i mean like the most linear deck that's that's the word it it really incentivizes you to play the most linear deck that could be you know linear aggro just being really really aggressive that could be just linear control just being hyper control of like lot like just all sorts of like removal and like no th like no like threats that that other that uh, your opponents can profitably use removal on. I don't need the second breeding pool, do I? Or of course a combo deck, you know, a linear combo deck. We're trying to dodge people's removals that way. And so no matter what the, f no matter what, uh, the cards are in standard, best of one is just always going to look like that. That's just how best of one is. Wow. I was trashing these Forcer Eulen Drakes we have in the sideboard. And then we get this matchup. I was like, nobody plays Mono Red anymore. We don't need Forcer Eulen Drakes. Never mind.
Because we should be, we should certainly be losing this game. Do not think we're winning this one. But then we'll have a, a lot of anti-red cards in our sideboard. How do you play best of three? So yeah, you just so you play one game like we just did, and then you go to sideboarding and you have an extra fifteen cards that you can put in as many of them in as you want and take as many out as you want. Um, well, you you need to you cannot have more than you got to have at least you, you got to have your sixty cards still um, at least sixty. You, you can't go down to like fifty cards. You can't just cut a bunch of cards. You have to have at least fifty, and you can have no more than fifteen in your sideboard. But you could, if you want, submit like 67. If you want, you could. That's something you could change. But, uh, let's see. So we're taking out that in Grow Spiral. I, mean, I could take out the Llanowar Elves because the Chain Whirler and everything will definitely slow us down. I don't really even like 26 lands with Grow Spiral. I kind of think like, you maybe need a little bit more. <clears throat> I need to take out one of these big things. I do like how, like, Tamiyo rebuying, like, Ether Gust or going and finding more Cerulean Drakes. I do like Tamiyo here, but uh, it starts at so much loyalty. It goes and gets Riptar Raptor, of course, and everything, but we don't need three. So, our anti aggro cards. Um, with Cerulean Drake and Ether Gust are very good against red here. But the aggro deck that almost everybody's playing is vampires, and so that's why I'm a little worried about these ones here. You, yeah, you should not put 67 cards. I'm just saying. I was just saying, like with the rules, like it's it's a you can, but no, you should not have 67 cards. I was not recommending to have 67 cards. Do they have three one mana spells again? Wow. Their whole hand's gone on turn three. Yeah, is that is that like the best draw? Like turn one, kill my elf. Turn two, steam can. Turn three, play one, two, three, four, five cards. Does it get better than that? I don't know. All right, so they have three damage. Three mana burn spell. Three damage burn spell. Still taking the two for one. I need to draw land and stuff. So they like kill Ripjaw. The, the thing is, are they going to go Chandra or Spitfire? Ooh, they did just decide just to target me. Okay. Because, yeah, we can't really like take all that and let them kill me. All right, so they're going Chandra. Watch it burn. Wow, that was a good one.
So Gus can get rid of the Chandra for a little bit. Wow. It's like if it was a spell that targeted me, I could have the Sir Yulin Drake. You know, they, they drew like a shock. I could have Sir Yulin Drake counter it. I do think that was the very, very best that Mono Red could ever possibly do. <laughs> that was insane. Wow. Yep. GG's. So instead of playing the two Lana War Elves, I could have, after draw step, Aether Gusted the Chandra, I guess, but I wanted the Lana War Elves because, you know, I want to be able to play, like, a, you know, get a, a good Krasis down, but, yep, sometimes Mono Red just does that. Oh well. Meow. Oh, I mean, playing playing Bant would would not have helped us there with those two draws that our red opponent had. The white cards would not have helped us there. We would have lost. Like, we're losing to those two hands. No matter whether whether you're playing Simic or Ban. Hey Carlos. <clears throat> really I mean these cards that we're playing here are like those those anti aggro tools in our sideboard, they honestly are better against red than what Bant has. So this hand was gonna be like turn two druid. I was gonna I was gonna play Krasis on turn three. Now we'll have Risen Reef on turn three. Looks like we're playing a mirror type match though. We're hoping Risen Reef hits land for us. Ramp try to get to this Nexus. Together we will prevail. I think we're dead though. We look pretty dead. Turn three Nessa. Our deck could do that sometimes too. Can we play the other Leafkin? Yeah, what our opponent's doing here is what we'd like to do it sometimes. So uh, yeah, my my plan is to like play four four crisis next turn, and then. Be able to Nexus with the 4 4 Krasis and kill the Nyssa with two attacks. I also kill the Lanawar Elf. Well, if they're attacking with the Risen Reef, they're you know definitely saying that they don't care about the whole elemental thing, and so that's you know killing the Land War Elf is just stone raining them. These decks are built completely on who on spending the most mana possible. 
And so stoning or stone raining them is valuable. All right, so bad news, we don't have a seventh land right now. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of mana, but it's still, you know, whether they have, like, you know, seven mana or eight mana, like, that's a difference. Eight or nine, that's a difference. Nine or ten, like, that's still certainly a difference, especially, you know, when we were playing cards like Hydro Crisis and everything. A land's still a land. I am not going to sit this one. Here we go. How much interaction do I want to have? We have Ether Gust and Mass Manipulation, which are both quality cards. You want those over Nexus Tamio? I don't like how I I think I'm just I think I really don't like these growth spirals compared to Paradise Druid. Uh, Raptor doesn't do anything. Combat doesn't matter. This is just really good against Nyssa. That's kind of it. I don't think I want it. Hmm. Maybe one. Maybe just take out the Nexuses. I don't know. I've played this kind of mirror before, and Nexus was awesome. But obviously, mass manipulation could be awesome too. Par Paradise Druid is it's gonna be better than Cloud Conseer. You need a ramp. Like Cloud Conseer doesn't do anything that matters. It can trigger Risen Reef, but it's attacking like with this kind of deck that we're playing, attacking isn't valuable. Blocking is valuable. A two one doesn't block though. Cloud Conseer doesn't do things that are valuable in this deck. All this deck's trying to do is ramp and draw cards. And stay alive. Which I guess Cloud Conseer draws one card. It's not really worth it though. Uh, I don't want to put any of these back. See, this was Paradise Druid. This will look, look a lot better. The thing is, is like this just requires you to have so many lands. It requires a gr like gross power requires you have just an abundance of lands. When we only have two lands, like sometimes you know, like hitting your land drops is a good way to ra to ramp yourself. Is just hitting your land drops, and well, gross spiral can get an extra land drop if you don't if you don't have the following land drop after you play Grow Spiral, what what good did it do?
Alright, admittedly, we're in trouble. You're just playing against somebody who had Danto out and they forgot to use its ability and scooped up, scooped it up right after that. All right, so getting a couple land drops here, being able to play Cavalier Thorns, really nice. We could manipulation for one if we decide to go that route with life. And very careful about that tapping. So, I believe they have Dovin's Veto. How they were so careful about this tapping. You know, like, the reason to do that is you have an instant that you want to play. And instant that would definitely make sense here is Dovin's Veto. You know, or Negate, same kind of thing. So, I'd rather my Nissa get countered. And then manipulation be able to take their Nissa. I'm scrying for a land here where if we get the land we get to take Cavalier and Nissa. What what is what does playing Krasis really help us with? Just play a Krasis on five and draw two cards? Definitely, Krasis can be better than that. The land like, fights for us. like, either Nissa resolves, and then Krasis is a lot better the next turn, or Nissa gets countered, and then our manipulation, hopefully, resolves. I guess I was supposed to, I mean... Wasn't really expecting a bunch of counter spells. I guess I could have brought in Veil of Summers. I assume I have Veil of Summers in the sideboard, right? Yeah. Do we think they just have another counter spell here? Like, let's say I just play Krasis for six here. Or for five? Krasis for five. And draw two cards. How how does next turn like next turn they'll still just have their counter spell, and I don't have like Veil of Summer or anything in my deck to like keep them from having counter spell. So my my situation doesn't improve any next turn whenever they are about to ultimate their Nissa. It's not like Krasis like doesn't do anything against Cavalier Thorns also. I guess I was supposed to board in all the Vale of Summers, I, I guess. The land shall conquer you. Really wasn't expecting just a bunch of negates. The 
the if they didn't have their own Cavalier of Thorns, I'd be attacking with mine. You know, if they had like a a six six, you know, I would like, I'd like my Cavalier of Thorns to die and get manipulation back, but. Yeah, I do, Brian. Eight, three, six, seven, eight. Thanks, Clowny. Yeah, we can still I mean if we if we draw a mass manipulation and have it resolved, we could still win. It's really like it depends on what our opponent has, you know, like they're just sitting over there with a bunch of cards now. They they've thinned out their deck a lot. You know, if they have like Krasis and Nissa and all that kind of stuff, then you know, then that's gonna be really tough. So them shocking in here. Shocking in. Still had counter spell up. All right, we'll play one more. Usually, you know, I'd be playing this through like a league, and if, you know, it would be first to five wins or two losses. But we'll we'll play one more. So my my opponent outside boarded me there with all the counter spells, but they kind of had everything. They had early ramp and Nissa and a bunch of counter spells. And they had a bunch of removal. You know, like they, they got rid of my O3 twice early. I guess they didn't have a bunch of ramp, but they got rid of the O3 twice and then had a ramp spell and then had a Nissa and then a bunch of counter spells. Yeah, it was just. They had everything. They had me covered completely. Yeah, turn two. Yeah, turn two was removal. Three was removal. Four was an inky or leaf can druid. Five was cavalier of thorns, and then it was Nissa plus negates.
then yeah, game game one, of course, they had turn three Nissa on the play. We haven't had ourselves. We haven't really had the deck's best openers. You know, we're we aren't, we're not going like turn one land werewolf too much. We did it the second time against mono red. We would have had turn one land werewolf, turn two risen reef, but they bolted my land werewolf. We would have had that. All right, so mono blue. While Krasis is like our best card to have later on in the game, I just want to play it here and not let them keep drawing cards with the Spectral Sailor. I'm not going to let him draw two. Resolve. Darn. We have not played a game at all yet where our opponent hasn't had an amazing hand. <laughs> it's been just five games of our opponents just having amazing hands and just crushing us. It's five for five. They missed a land drop. Well, maybe we have a shot. See if they have like unsummon or merfolk trickster or that kind of stuff. All right, great sign for us. We're one land away from being able to double spell with Tamiyo and Nissa. And I'm feeling a little safe with this Cavalier here. So I think I want to wait a turn. Instead of just like playing one of our things and then counter it, wait a turn and try to and be able to play both. Kind of thing. I'm gonna be leading with Nissa. Nissa's better to get countered for a lot of reasons, not only um, not only do we have the second one, but Tamiyo gets Krasis back for us, where Krasis is really important here. Opportunity for new data. I guess I could get back Leafkin Druid. Or sorry, not Leafkin Druid, sorry. Cavalier Thorns. That's that's the card I was thinking of. But yeah, I guess I we could just get back Cavalier Thorns here. With both of them resolving and them go trying to go wide with all these flyers, so we have two two blockers. And then we'll be we can use Tam we can like take up Tamio to look for Crace for another Crasis. Yeah, we we are in ranked right now though. This donation this is a d donation deck that I am playing in ranked. So Veil of Summer is perfect, but I think that's it. I think that's all we want. 
Um, Hmm. I do like Nexus in this matchup. Instants are good. Like, we're cast Nexus during their turn. They have to counter it, and then we untap and can play something else. I honestly don't really love Nissa. They fly over Nissa really well. I don't want to take out Nissa. Hey, what's up, Vendetta? Thanks for continuing on that Twitch Prime sub streak. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Get some hype votes in the chat, everybody, for our resub. Take out Nissa's. All right, our sixth subscriber of the day. The the cutest homeless kitty outside of your sister's house there. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to take a look at the kitty and the and the, you put the pictures in the Discord channel. Aw. Or underfed kitty. Aw. I honestly don't know if I'm supposed to be playing the Leaf Kindred right there. If I should wait till I play the Risen Reef first. Because the Leaf Kindred doesn't do anything. Right now. We could draw Cavalier Thorns. Uh, or something like that. Oh my gosh. I guess I could have gone to five, I guess. I don't think this was a mulligan. No, it's not realistic to play every single hand until the opponent kills me without conceding, even with, with donation decks. Just from a, a time standpoint and a, an endurance of playing, of streaming for how many hours standpoint, it's just, it's not, it's not realistic and it's not worth it. And even just in an entertainment standpoint, when the game's over, like what, you know, like earlier, like whenever we played against with the Mono White, like whenever they had the Liliana and the Teferi, and we had a 0% chance of winning, we could have played <clears throat> could have played the other, you know, the other 10 minutes or whatever, or we could just Um, like we could play like, you know, another 10, 10 minutes of magic where we are a hundred percent to lose, but it's better just to get to another game that's more interesting and, and one that 
you know, we actually have decisions to make and, and where things matter. Yeah, Devin, I do. I have a list for Mono Red Goblins with Goblin Ringleader. I uh, you have to scroll for it. I don't know. I don't remember where when, when I played it, but you can find it on the Stream Decker page or the YouTube channel. It's probably easier to scroll through the YouTube channel. <clears throat> Veil vale is too go too good of a card to just tr to just cycle it. For nothing. Gosh, do I have to just cycle Veil vale now? Because so now we're really behind them having Surge Mare. So obviously this is not countering my spell. So, Veil vale Summer doesn't do anything to protect against Aether Gust. No, that's that's not a thing, Emmanuel. So game three, we're going to hope that my opponent doesn't have all their anti-green cards. They do have a lot of anti-green cards. He's Aether Gust, the Surge Mare. And we're going to hope we actually play things. Uh, all right, we found our blue mana. Uh, Terminator Surge Mirror. I guess instead of the that Risen Reef, I guess I could have played Tamio Minus to try to. Get Cavalier Thorns back. Gas? You know, we get to hit our land drops. 
Uh, hit a lot of land drops, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad. Darn. Be a lot easier to win on one land than two lands here. Ooh, that was a really good draw. Wow, that was the best draw in our deck. Frickin' Aether Gust. I want Nissa in play before I Nexus. Because, you know, want to be able to activate Nissa multiple times there. It's weird that, like, you know, you see, like, a counter spell and you're happy. The land shall conquer you. This one's not, not over for us yet. It looks good, but, I mean, they can just play, like, little 1-1s one and chump block and everything and win with the Storm Tamer. This isn't... They're drawing three... Three cards a turn. I don't even know if we're favored from here, honestly. Because, you know, they just counter Nexus, block a little bit, kill me in the air. I think my best plan, my best course of action here is casting Nexus on their turn. Like, not let them get any value off of this two mana here. All right, well, he tapped out, so. That's that's my the ether gust is my choice. It's the the owner its owner gets to choose. I get to choose whether I want it top or bottom. So it's not so my opponent isn't like choosing to keep to put the Nissa on top. That's my choice. So I I of course want the Nissa, so I'm putting it on top.
Yeah, that was that was pretty important waiting on the Nexus there. The land fights for us. I think I think the waiting on the Nexus play got us won us this game. So they have four blockers, we have five attackers. So the the one little land werewolf gets through. Like we we won by one point there. Like seriously, just one point won us that. If our opponent had one one more point of life, we would have lost. There. I think the ether gust play makes a lot of sense from them. I don't I don't know to like. I don't know if they should be expecting me to just have Nexus. Well, maybe... Did they see Nexus? They might have saw Nexus Game 1 from Cavalier Thorns. Milling over. Anyway. Yes, I... I explained earlier why it doesn't make sense to play. Yeah, I already explained that. I already explained why it doesn't make sense to play every single, every single turn when in games that are lost. Um. Uh, yes, I with the mastery thing. I I did. I purchased the one with came with that came with the ten levels, and then I also purchased around ten other levels. Um, like twice for like to to get to like a specific card that I wanted, uh, like the card style for because I was playing it like with the deck, um, for stream and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, that that Simic ramp here. Um, so our deck. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like this version too much. Here it felt. It felt kind of like narrow, like I didn't really have too much things to choose. It's definitely very powerful. Like, I I do like Nexus. Like, as long as people stay with Escape Shift, I do like Nexus in the ramp decks. I think that's like how you should go with the ramp decks is going with Nexus instead of like manipulation. I think. I didn't really like the Grow Spiral. The Grow Spiral was awesome that last game. That last game, like whenever I kept a five lander, that's when Grow Spiral is at its best when you have like five lands. But like those other games, like where we're where we're kind of struggling to hit our land drops, like Gross Spiral doesn't help you out there. I think overall, I I would prefer Paradise Druid. Um, so comparing this deck to whenever we did the Tier One Tuesday and we played Bant Bant Ramp, I think this is a version I would I would prefer. We have like the Nexuses. Cavalier Thorns is just an awesome, awesome card in this, and I, I like it a ton. Uh, we saw like we saw it be very good there for us, um, and so like basically the only differences here is that and and then like the Paradise Druids. Well, there there should be four Hinterland Harbors. I don't know why there's oh because right because we're banned right 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 because we're banned because we're playing all the, the white cards as well. Um, I like the uh, the. The other the other Simic Ramp deck only had three Temple of Mysteries. But I, I really like Temple of Mystery in this kind of deck as like there are certain cards like you're trying to get to the later part of the game. There's certain cards like Krasis, Nexus of Fate, things like that that you really, really want to find and usually have a, a lot of mana anyway. Temple of Mystery is also a perfect card to hit off of Cavalier Thorns or Risen Reef um, as well. So I think even in that Simic Ramp deck, I think that deck needs to have four Temple of Mysteries and only had three. Um, I guess the, only, the the other big thing here is I'm playing Negates. There weren't Negates in that other one because there was all those mass manipulations. I don't know if you really need the mass manipulations to replace Nexus. That didn't really seem like that much of an upgrade there. Um, but anyway... Um, That's it here for Simic Ramp.
Um, we'll go back to the original deck. So usually the donation decks, we play the leagues with them and play till they win five or lose two. But as we talked about, this is a definitely a really solid deck. We, we went over, played some matches and ranked and uh, played three matches here with it. Um, got a good, good sense of the deck here. A uh, question, what deck did I like the most today? Um, for like, for like which deck I liked the most, I like to play and everything, uh, the, the Bant Arcbow. You know, it says that we went 3-2 up there. We lost our two against Vampires. Uh, still kind of figuring that matchup out a little bit, but we, we drew, we didn't draw so well in those matches too. We won our other matches. The deck felt pretty good. I liked that Bant Arcbow deck a lot. Anyway, so there is, uh, there's Simic Ramp. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Leave a comment too. I'd appreciate that. But thanks for watching Simic Ramp here, and I'll see you for the next video.